What you're about to experience are my opinions and truths. I'm suggesting their possibilities for you to consider, in which you can then come up with your own logical conclusions. Amazing decoders around the world, both male and female. My name is Logan, and this, of course, is Decode Your Reality. And today we're going to be breaking down and decoding lead to gold. It's a very special presentation. This one is going to provide you with some absolute clarity on what lead to gold means from an esoteric point of view, from a mystical arts point of view, from a mathematical point of view. And if you're an alchemist or a fan of alchemy, welcome out. You're going to really enjoy this presentation. So let's Without further ado, let's jump in, get settled in, put on a pair of headphones. This one's going to be another gem. So starting off with a little bit of math, let's bring some math from the source code from lead to gold. And you know, gold being the 79th element. Well, I want to bring that into the, no, num this is a great website, numberempire.com. The 79th prime number is 401, which is going to be tied to the great beast. But bringing it into pure math, into the string of the golden ratio, because gold has to do with the sun and light and the golden ratio. That's why the typically currency is backed by gold. But look at where the 401 appears in the string of the golden ratio. Well, there's pi. <laughs> so right off with a bang, pure mathematics, gold is tied to the golden ratio and the string of pi. Right off the bat, there it is, pure mathematics. And then what about when we take this 401 and bring it into the string of pi? Well, once again, we get another source code outcome. 401 begins at the 1,100, <coughs> excuse me, a 97 decimal digit. What do you see there? The 197 here is the other stable isotope of gold itself. It is the 197. It's right there, folks. This is how tightly woven gold is into our simulation and into our reality, into our source code reality. This is how tightly woven right there with pure mathematics from the golden ratio showing pi and then pi showing gold going right back to gold again right off the bat but that was just for starters that was the intro <laughs> wait till you see some of the stuff that i'm about to show you right now wow 
All right, I'm, I'm pretty stoked to show you this. So let's talk about the topics. We talked about the intro. Number one, Lucy's nickel. Lucy in the sky. Number two, role play. Number three, this is going to be a massive truth bomb, the Red Queen. Number four, the topic itself led to gold. Number five and the last topic, the other led. And then always love to hear what your observations are. Keep them coming in the comment section below. What did you see? All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. The first topic, it's Lucy's nickel. Lucy's nickel. And I'm going to start off with this graphic right here. And on your left side of the screen, we have gold hanging down. We have lead hanging down. And it's called plumbum. I mean, the Latinized expression of lead is plumbum. That's why it has the abbreviation right here, the PB. Lead. I mean, they make bullets out of lead. It's, it's really interesting, this, this element. Prison planets tied to this element lead, the 207. But notice right off the bat, the Latinized spelling of plumbum is 33. Tied to the crucifixion. And what I wanted to point out as well is lead. When you go to the numerology cipher here and type that in, you're going to get 13 which is a direct match to this word right there. Lucy, 13. How about that? Right off the bat, bam. So you can see it's Lucy's nickel, and I'm gonna show you the nickel, but plumbum 33, tied to the <coughs> crucifixion, tied to Lucifer and Jesus, if you bring arsenic into this in the 74. But then we go to the Latinized spelling of gold, orum. And if you just take, you know, the 19, if you just take the first letter of each word, it's going to give you the golden ratio because A is 1, P is 16. That's going to give you a permutation of the 161. I'm going to be showing you that golden ratio. Make no mistake about it. But right off the bat, there we go, the 33 and the 19, and whoops. And then we get into some tarot to tell us the story because we think in pictures. And it's the 19th card in the tarot, the sun. So... I said gold is the sun. Of course it is. It's tied to the sun, which is going to be tied to the number five. But there it is tied to orm and gold in the sun. And then it's also tied to this right here, which I found as an anomaly last year. It's probably going on two years now. This 193746, which is found in the string of pi. Those of you that are new, let me just show you really quick. Those of you that have returning subscribers, just stand by. So we take the 19, we put it in here. It's found at the 37th decimal digit. Then we take the 37, and then it's found at the 46th decimal digit. Then we take the 46, and we go right back to the 19. This is the only anomaly I've ever found in the string of pi. It's pretty amazing. But is this the recycle bin? I mean, if you go study the recycle logo and who created it, it's all scripted, folks. We're living in a scripted reality. I have over 300 videos now supporting that. Many of you great decoders are also forecasting or showing your videos, showing we live in a scripted reality. But it's lead to gold. It's plumbum to orum, and orum being the 19, perhaps being the sun that runs with the moon, which runs with Earth, which I showed in my Prison Planet series. And this transference of lead to gold, the energy exchange is what the Greeks called ambrosia being used for food. But anyway, let's talk about some cards of illumination. So we get into the 19 and we get into the six of clubs, the 19th card in the deck, the 52 cards of a typical deck of playing cards. Now, how important these are? 52 cards, 52 weeks, four suits, four seasons, embedded into nature, embedded into the source code. So we got the one for Orem in gold. What about the one for Plumbum in the 33? Well, there it is. It's the seven of diamonds. This is the Saturn Saturn card right here, by the way. And this is Saturn's element right here. So you know the, if you know the cards, I mean, I, I got a card course coming out for basics. And you'll see this seven of diamonds is the Saturn Saturn card, which is shared with Venus as well. But the seven of diamonds 
and the six of clubs. And we you know what we have here subtly is the 67, which is gonna be tied to Holmium, the most magnetic element. Think about that, led to gold being very magnetic. And then we can also follow it as the 76, which is gonna give us Osmium, the wizard of Oz. And then seven plus six is 13. And we can go right back to this right here and Lucy in the sky with diamonds, the 13. Okay, so they're, they're, all these are tied in because it's part of the source code, led to gold, the transference of energy, the transmutation of energy, which is what all of us are being harvested for. How about the tarot when we convert it from the cards of illumination? So remember, just, just so you know, from everything I've researched, the cards of illumination came first, and then the tarot came second. It doesn't mean the tarot doesn't have any, or it doesn't mean these have seniority. I'm just telling you the antiquity of the research that I've come up with. So the six of clubs, meaning the mental realm is the six of wands. And then the diamond suit, which is representing the uh, water, is going to be the seven of pentacles. I know it's going to be different in the tarot, but I'm just going by the cards of illumination first. And I mean, this says it all with the pictures. We're talking lead to gold now. Look at what, how beautiful the tarot is. You see the seven of pentacles. Look at what this dude's doing right here. He's observing all, everything he's swept up. So think about that. The starting point is lead. We become lead. Matter of fact, uranium, it has a decay model of going to radium and radon. It goes all the way down to lead. It ends at lead if you leave it out. And in the starting point is uranium, which I'm gonna be showing the letter U which is going to be tied to the universe. But this is all about observing what you've accomplished during this lifetime or, or, the, or the architect observing what's going to stay and what's going to be thrown into the trash. And then the ending point, the aurum, the goal that gets all the victory is this card. And that's exactly what this card means. It means victory. That's why there's the wreath on top on the, the largest stake here, the largest one riding in on this horse. There's no battle gear going on. This is the card of victory. This was also tied to Bretton Woods in 1944 when they made the United States dollar the gold standard. In 1944, this is the card that was attached to that. This right here. <laughs> and it's the 71st card in the deck. And it's the 28th card in the deck, but these fluctuate depending on if you use the Fool as card 22 or not. So it's the 27, 28th card and the 70 and 71st card. And when you bring in the elements on the periodic table to match up these tarot cards going into another layer. Now we bring alchemy into this again, because we started with alchemy, led to gold through numerology, the cards of illumination, the tarot, now back to alchemy. It's once again, lutetium, Lucy in the sky, Lucifer. This is Lucifer, one of Lucifer's elements. 71 is the 20th prime number, going to bring you down to duality. 20 is duality. But then it's the victory, the nickel, and old Saint Nick. And then if you bring 27, it's going to be cobalt, which is going to be tied to Jupiter. But it's, you know, nickel, old Saint Nick, devil's copper, tied to Lucifer, the light bringer, always labeled as the devil through the transference of the church. I shouldn't say always, but a lot of times the interpretation, but I, I feel those interpretations are wrong. You just gotta know what you're looking for, but there you go. And this, we're gonna be talking a lot about Lucifer during this. <laughs> Seems like we always do. It's not because I'm playing favorites, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's get into the second topic now. I got a lot of content, man. I, let's get into role play. Because, you know, if you come here, we're being used, folks. We're being used and let, let's get into this now though. Well, how? Let's do the role play led to gold. And let's start off just the, the two words, lead and gold. And notice right off the bat, you're going to get the 13 and the 17. The 137 is in there, which is going to be tied to the 33. 137 being the 33rd prime number. I know there's an extra one in there, but if you know numbers and how to decode and observe these numbers, the 137 is in there. But anyway, it's a number 30, this right here, lead and gold. And this is going to be tied to role play. So this is again, getting more into mankind being used to role play, to play out this game. We're in an experiment, we're in a movie, we're in a soap opera. 
And I mean, it's a direct match. It's not even just a 30, but it's a 17 and a 13. There's no fudging on this at all. This is a perfect match right here. Lead to gold right there. I mean, the word life equals 17, but what's running it? Well, the Gnostics called the G-O-D the Demiurge. That's a 30 in the same cipher. And then we get into the role play itself, the finalized graphic of this, the one I've created. And, you know, I, I, I actually just created this for Kevin Clark today. So what's up, Kevin, if you're watching this, because he had mentioned that he's a conduit, a fellow decoder, a very, very smart one. Said as I'm just a conduit for the code because he know, he knows how it works, but I mean this was a huge clue for me. I mean all in the same family, 30, 30, 30, and we're just giving feedback as we're cells of the battery. We're all just like transistors tied to germanium, the 32nd element meaning hell, but all being role played. And then when you say 30, it's 17. And 17th card. I mean, obviously the tarot has so much to say and how valuable this is. We're all stars down here. When you incarnate and become physical matter. Well, you're now a puppet on strings. And uh, right there, the 30 is 17. And I'll be showing this during my, my Red Queen uh, topic. So hang on to your seats because here it is. This one is going to blow your mind. Okay, let's get started with this one. So here's some pure math again, using the string of pi and phi. And you know, hopefully you're a fan of these two uh, amazing mathematical expressions that make up our reality, that measure our reality, especially the golden ratio measuring the Fibonacci tied to the Fibonacci sequence. But nonetheless, we're talking about magnetism, electricity. That's what these things measure as well. So I decided to go 79 digits into both of these great mathematical expressions including the three point and the one point. You can do it, it'll change and it'll give you a different outcome, but nonetheless, here it is. The 376 for pi, and we add up the 79 digits of phi and we get 365. Of course, there's the Gregorian total calendar year right there. And if you add up 376 and 365, simple math, get out your calculators, Bam, there it is. And we go right back again. See, I just, I'm not, and again, this is not trying to pick favorites or it's like just this is the source code. <laughs> and it's going back to Lutetium and the 741. You know, if you study Manly P. Hall and the secret teachings of all ages, it says in his book, Lucifer's numbers are 741. Well, there it is right there. When you add up 79 digits in the string of pi and phi, you get 741 gold. So what's what's transferring the gold? Lucifer is known as the light bringer. Well, light is going to be tied to gold because the sun delivers light. So these are all constructs of this reality. And this is the element that has that 741. It's not exact, but it's a permutation. 71 is Lutetium. Lucy, Lucifer, Lu, which is also Luge. If you know what Luge means, so this 741 is a big one because it's the 38th triangular number. This reality, I feel, is made up of primarily the square, the circle, and the triangle, the tetrahedron. Check out my prison plan, or my architect of the universe decoded. Broke it all down there with numbers and pure math and polygonal shapes. But bam, here it is again. Lutetium, the spelling of that through numerology, same cipher. Once again, we get the... 33. But the big takeaway is the 38, folks. The 38 is the big takeaway. And it's tied to this card in the deck called the Queen of Diamonds. The Red Queen right here, which is the topic of this of this uh, this one right here. So let's get into it. This one's going to blow your mind, folks. You see, this, this book right here, just follow my narration. This book right here, written by Richard Condon, was called The Manchurian Candidate. And then it was made into a movie in 1962. And then it was revised in 2004 by Denzel Washington and Lee Schreiber. If you haven't seen it, it was an amazing movie. But it was all about mind control. 
okay? And the reason why I'm showing this is because, you see, this element right here is called molybdenum, which is Greek for molybdos, which means lead. So you have lead here, number 82, but there are two leads. <coughs> There's the 42. Notice they end in two. This one has the four, this one has the eight. So they're in bed together, as I say, but here's the original spelling broken down through the Greek, where it came from. Molybdenum means molybdos. There's the original numerology of it through the Greek. It's the 33, again. And then the word Manchurian, from that book and movie, is a 30 freaking three. And then the Latinized spelling of lead itself, as I showed, is a 33. All in the same cipher. I mean, the Greek, this is the original spelling of it, which is why I'm showing that. But let's keep going because here's the book. Here is the book that was written in 1959 by Richard Condon. April 27th. 27 is going to be tied to cobalt. It's going to be tied to Jupiter. Has a big say in all of this. Abraxas and all that stuff. But April 27th, here's the card that's linked to the date this book came out the publication date the seven of clubs up for those of you that are new here's the boilerplate chart for the cards of illumination i hope you if you don't have this graphic you can find it online send me an email i'll send it to you decode your reality at gmail.com but here are the 12 months right here running horizontally and then vertically you're going to get the 31 days on the side here but here's april and then you come down to the number 27 when this book was released and there it is the seven of clubs card and then we go here and we look and there's the seven of clubs card, the 20th card in the deck. And we know that the word duality equals 20. Duality equals 20. So we go to numerology here and we can see that duality equals 20. Same cipher again. Don't have to deviate away from that. The Manchurian candidate being used in duality I mean, did, did McGraw-Hill know to release it on this date because they play the cards and they're heavily favored into the cards of illumination and they knew April 27th? But of course, it's going to lead right back to Lutetium and Lucy and Lucifer, the light bringer, light slowed down into physical matter, 71 being the 20th prime number. How about that? There it is right there again with this Manchurian. I am going somewhere with this, folks, but how about the pages of the book i mean this guy wrote it do you uh, do you think he's trying to screw you over trying to mock you or do you just think he's an uh, he's an author and he writes books do, or do you think his agent told him hey you better make sure this book's 311 pages i mean i mean i write stuff I'm, i've never written a book per se and got it published but those of you that are writers i mean i you know how hard it is to write your book and then for someone to tell you it's got to be a certain amount of pages i'm you can delete pages yes but i mean uh, to tell you somebody to get it 311 pages to match this up to make sure it's the 64th prime number 311 and this, this is the clue again, the source code playing out. What is this telling you? It's the Manchurian candidate, which is the mankind experience being used on the chessboard because the chessboard has 64 squares. Our DNA has 64 possible codons, 23 and me, 23 and 23 is 46, which is the mirror of the 64. All part of the source code. We're playing out a game. That's why chess was created. It's good versus evil. It's the demon and the angel playing out all the time. The white and the black. It's duality. It's exactly, and the Manchurian candidate is, is mankind being used. So here's the guy who wrote the book, which was made into the movie, Richard Thomas Condon. Notice that his name is Richard and Thomas. And when you go here and you do the numerology of that, Richard is an 18, which is the same as this. Jesus, which is the same as this. Christ. And then Thomas, of course, is the 24, which is tied to Jesus' twin brother, Thomas. It's Jesus and Thomas, the two twins, playing out their duality down here in the game of life, the game of chess. 
the Force, Darth Vader and Yoda. It's all in the movies and they all tell us all this kind of stuff. But the interesting part about this guy, besides him being born on March 18th, which is the Five of Diamonds card tied to Jerry Cantrell of Alice in Chains, who wrote a song about down in a hole off the album Dirt, we're made of dirt. If you follow theology, it's just all hilarious, this whole script. But the interesting part is when he passed on April 9th at the age of 81, 81 is going to be linked to Pi. Pi is eight and one. But it's April 9th, and here is the April 9th card in the deck. It's the Queen Diamonds, which is the card that this guy put on his book. Think about what I'm showing you. And you know what some people are going to say? Yeah, well, they murdered him. They murdered him to match it up. What? Now, I'm not saying some people don't get into the code and probably go by the code, but it doesn't matter because it's superseded by the source code, playing out everything behind the scenes, pulling the strings. If you haven't seen the movie Adjustment Bear, I'm going to probably decode that 2011. Whew. Some truths in there, I believe anyway, but think about what I'm showing you. The guy has the Queen of Diamonds on his book cover. It was made into a movie, highlighted, and the guy dies on April 9th, which is the Queen of Diamonds card. I mean, well, let's keep going. So it gets even more interesting because here's a guy right here who was involved in the worst mass shooting in the history of the United States. October 1st, 2017, he was involved. He was the guy that was supposedly the shooter in the Route 91 harvest. Harvest meaning the fall, because October is the fall, but harvest is obviously much more deeper than just it being on October 1st, which is the 101 in the portal. But this guy right here was born on the same day that, um, that Richard Condon, who wrote his book, died on. Okay, coincidence? <coughs> But Stephen Craig Paddock's the worst shooting in mass history, 60 people, 60 tied to neodymium and feed the wolf, if you've been paying attention, tied to the Great Pyramid of Giza. But this guy right here has the April 9th birthday, which means he's tied to the 38th card in the deck, which is the Queen of Diamonds. It's the Red Queen. Now follow my lead here, just to show you how scripted this reality is. This guy was born in Clinton, Iowa. So I do, obviously, I'm always going to fact check. If you're a decoder, look at the latitude, longitudes. You should be knowing where yours is, where you were born, the hospital you were in, the house you're living in right now. What's the energy? X marks the spot. The latitude coming down is the north, and he's 41 degrees north. And then the, latitude, the longitude coming across is going to be the 90 degrees west. And when you use simple math and add them up, it's going to give you the 131 and that's going to lead into this statement right here and there's a reason why i'm showing you this off of the 1973 album dark side of the moon by pink floyd roger waters sang a song called brain damage and in that song which i broke down there's someone in my head but it's not me now some people are going to say oh well they're using technology to put voices in your head. Well, folks, I've decoded myself and I'm being used. And why would anybody be putting anything into my head? I'm just me. So if you think about it, and those of you that have been decoding, you're seeing your script playing out. So who's putting these little voices in your head? But it's right here, this what you bring alchemy right back into this again, because it's always going to give you some serious things to think about. It's going to be this element xenon. Look at the X, the X and the E. And it comes from this Greek word xenos, which means stranger. Think about it. There's someone in my head, but it's not me. And this is this comes from the word xenos, meaning stranger. There's a stranger in my head. This guy and the guy who wrote this book talking and this book was about mind control. It's, it ain't the CIA doing the mind control. They may do it, but they're being used. It's all just fractals. How about this movie right here? 1988, John Carpenter, classic. Some people think this is a documentary. What news station was broadcasting the hypnotic trance? 
obey, consume. <laughs> it was news station 54. And what's Xenon's protons? 54. Now, this is not stretching anything. This is, this is how you decode right here, ladies and gentlemen. And then, you know, there's, it's 32 letters, the subtleties. What does water do when it hits 32 degrees Fahrenheit? It freezes. When it liquefies, 33 degrees. So this is representing duality. The game of life, chess. And here it is, Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. There's someone in my head, but it's not me. It's tied to the all-seeing eye, and the Egyptians had it right. I mean, it's inside your brain if you cut it in half, but let's get into the Red Queen. I mean, if you weren't just kind of blown away and floored by that, by what I just showed you about the worst uh, mass shooting in history, let's get into the Red Queen. The Red Queen. The Red Queen is 33. Same as Manchurian which is what was on this cover, which was first written in a book in 1959, tied to the game of life. And it's all tied to lead, lead to gold. It's the transference of energy. This is what we become when we come down and incarnate spirit coming into matter. Malebdos 33, Plumbum, the Latinized version of the other lead, 33, being the Manchurian candidate. We think everybody thinks some people just get a hall pass. The Red Queen, and keep in mind, this Red Queen is the 38th card in the deck. Right there. Go look up where Washington, D.C. is located on its latitude, longitude coordinates, 38 degrees north. You think they're running the show? It ain't nobody. The Masons aren't running Washington, D.C. They're being used. <laughs> There's no exceptions to this code, folks. There's no hall passes given out. But when you say Red Queen, it's 33. And when you say 33, it's 38. And this is the 38th card in the deck. How about that? Right there. Same cipher. See, if I were to use another cipher, I'm not saying they don't have merit, but then, you know, it's an extension beyond. This is the, using the same numerology cipher. The oldest one known to man, Chaldean numerology, if you're a fan of numerology. Chaldean is the oldest. Works off of phonetics and the shapes and it's also heavily tied into hebrew and out and uh aramaic as well but i mean there's the queen diamonds on the 1962 poster there's the queen diamonds on the dvd for the movie 1962 it was all over to check out the manchurian candidate 2004 denzel washington amazing movie leave schreiber he's a five of diamonds which is Richard Condon, the guy who wrote the book. He was a five of diamonds. I mean, it's just, it's just ridiculous, this code. Ridiculously scripted. So this 33 is 38, 38th card in the deck. It's the, the queen. Q is the 17th letter. Gold is 17. 30 is 17. Life is 17. Matrix is 17. They're all 17. So I decided to break down the 33. When you say 33, the numerology of it becomes a 38, so we know it's tied to the Queen Diamonds card. But it's 30 and then 3. So I decided to go 30 digits into the string of pi. And then you have the 3. There's the 3, and then there's 30 digits beyond the 3. So it makes up the 33. And lo and behold, what sits at the 30th decimal digit? It's the 9. Right before it, it's the seven. It's the 79, right at the end of 30 digits in the string of pi, making up this 17, making up matrix, and making up the word dios, making up the word life. But there it is, it's the 33 using math, and then it's 147 when you add it up for its total. And then when you bring that into the string of pi, and you look and see, as I told you, it sits at 20, this right here, circled, is digit 29 and 30. And what is 29 and 30 when you add it up? 59. And what is 59? When you do the numerology, the game of life. You see, it's all right there, folks. See, we're playing out a game, it's called life. Life is 17. That's why this 30 is so big. 
30 tied to Demiurge, tied to the New Age name of the yod heh vah Jehovah, tied to Santa Claus, tied to the word Nazareth, where Jesus said he was from. It's tied to the element zinc. And zinc's all about going down the, the off the roof. It's just comical if you go study the zinc element. And then the 147, when you add up these digits, from the 33, from the 38, you get, you get to Pi Day. This is how ridiculously scripted this source code is. You see Pi Day, March 14th, through the common and the leap year is day 73 and 74. If you simple math, 73 plus 74 is 147. And the, the card that is representing March 14th, the 35th card in the deck, the simulation card, there it is. So this is telling you that 33, ruled by the 38 and the Queen of Diamonds, is the, it's just a simulation. We're in a simulation. It's not real, folks. We, 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 appear, we perceive it as real. But when you detach and you just look and you see you're in a movie. You're in a freaking movie. You're in a, a novel, a soap opera. You're in a Truman show. I mean, right here as well, our blood, our blood's pH. Go, st go look up it, it. Our blood's pH is balanced perfectly at 7.3. 7.4 potential hydrogen pH. The blood is our blood becoming an avatar. And then you have to live out through pi. And you live on the perfect circle, which is earth. It's all right here in the source code. It's all right there. All of it. All right, let's get into the next. If you weren't blind, blown away with that. Let's get into, I got much more to show you. So let's get into lead to gold now. And let's now get into the four basic uh, elements on the periodic table that will give you the expression of lead to gold. It's lead, thallium, mercury, and gold. 82, 81, 80, and 79 in that lineage. And it forms the golden ratio. It forms the 1.61. How I know that is, is that you see when you take these, well, first, let me show you this. When you take the um, numerology of these four elements using the Latinized spelling Plumbum, thallium, hydrogerum, and aurum. It's going to give you 110, bringing that into the string of pi. We get, once again, I, this is becoming a common theme now. It's the 71, and 71 is the 20th prime number representing duality, but it's tied to the 174 and the lutetium element. Remember, this is the 33 in numerology. You see that 33? That's how important this 33 is. But going back to these four elements right here and how important this is, and pure math and alchemy now, if you take these two elements on the end, lead and gold, and you add them up, go ahead and get out your calculators. 82 plus 79 is going to give you 161. And just like that, we have the golden ratio. And that golden ratio is also found in the two middle elements in between the lead and the gold. It's thallium and mercury because 81 plus 80 is 161. So how about that? They both equal the 161, the ends and the middle. And then you get into some theology and the biblical expression through the Old Testament, the Talmud, I would say the tree of life and the tree of knowledge. It's through the original spelling now. It's the 80 and 81 stuck sandwiched right in between the lead and the gold. So the, the tree of knowledge and the tree of life, it's, it's, this, this is what we're playing out here. You know, Mercury, of course, being the planet of communication, I showed how important the stallium is. Check out my cannabis decoded because cannabis is tied right to this element, which is tied to the tree of knowledge. That's right. Those of you that are cannabis fans rejoice because when you partake in that special plant, you really tap into the source code. That's why it's tied to the tree of knowledge. But Mercury being, you know, the planet closest to the sun, the sun being gold, I mean, it's very fitting that it's right next to gold, right? Because the Mercury is the planet right next to the sun. And there it is on the periodic table right next to gold. And gold is the representation of the sun. But going further with this, how about these guys right here? These guys and gals, perhaps, maybe I think it's all gentlemen, but the Skull and Bones Society, their logo, the 322, well, there it is. It's, I mean, I'm sure they know this, but there's lead to gold 
and the big 322. And of course, again, 322 divided by two is 161, which I, I just showed that right here, found from these two ends and then the middle. 161 in the middle, 161 on the ends, giving you the 322 for the total. And then when you add them up, using the atomic masses, I'm going the most abundant now, you get the number 811.112, and 811 is the 141st prime number. <laughs> and 141 is tied to pi. As a matter of fact, the element neodymium, the 60th element, has got the most abundant weight of 141 neodymiums tied to the Great Pyramid of Giza, which I believe has a big say in our reality in this simulation that we're playing out. And then what about the 322 in the string of the golden ratio? Because we're talking lead to gold. Well, it's found at the 181st decimal digit starting there. And that's a prime number, not just any prime number. It's the 42nd prime number. And then we get into the other lead, which is molybdenum 40. Two. And the most abundant weight of a molybdenum is 97. 97 is the 25th prime number. The word black sun equals 25. So let's get into now, you know, a little bit of this molybdenum, which is the other lead. I have a topic coming on that, up on that. It is going to probably be, it's going to be my last topic, I believe. But this molybdenum right here, lead to gold, right? Besides lead itself, it's molybdenum and the 42 and so i decided to take all the elements because we did it here off these four of course four is very important it's tied to the box but what about these elements right here from the 42 all the way through to the 79 and we get 38 count them up ladies and gentlemen from molybdenum, which is the other lead. Molybdos meaning lead. It's 42 through 79. It's going to give you 38 total elements. And we go back to this right here. And what was the red queen? The 38th card in the deck. How about that? So what are we to do with this? Are we just to brush it off? No, see folks, this is the source code. From an alternative viewpoint, it's molybdenum through gold. And when you take these right here, there's so much you can do with this. And for the sake of time, I'm not going to be showing a ton of math, just uh, one example, but you can go really deep with this. Here's an Excel spreadsheet that I created with these 38 elements right here. And I use the, the most abundant weight not the average, the most abundant weight. And you can go gangbusters with what I'm showing you, but this is the total amount of protons for all 38 elements representing lead to gold. It's 2299. And let's bring that into the string of pi and see what number we come up with. And just like that, we get pi. You see that right there, folks? 2299 is 14100. There is the 3.141 right there. And if you know the 22 and 99, it's going to give you the 22. If you add all this, the 99 is going to repeat the 22. 22 is tied to titanium and Saturn's moon Titan and the Titans, the fallen angels story, all tied to that. With this example right here, bam. So you can have fun with this. You can subtract, take away some of these elements. If you take away gold and molybdenum, in between is 35 elements. What is 35? 35 is tied to the simulation. You see? So lead to gold is also meaning simulation, which is the transference of energy. It's har the harvest of energy, folks. That's exactly what this whole reality is based upon. And is the reason why I have this character here. This character, this is not to mock anybody. This is, gets a lot of energy on the world stage. 
So let's get into the other lead now, because we talked about molybdenum. So let's highlight this <laughs> and finish this presentation off. So molybdenum comes from the Greek word molybdos, which means lead. I've said this already. Here's the most abundant, and here is the average. And if you know what you're looking for, the 95 is tied to americium, which is tied to the I am that I am. This is going to be tied to Jupiter as well. Jupiter has the 42 in its logo. I'm going to be showing that. But it means lead, and 42 is the protons of molybdenum. And is this a coincidence? Is this by accident? Is this man doing anything? Because, I mean, molybdenum really occurs. And it really does have 42 protons. Well, how about that word right there? Crucifixion. Which is why I certainly ain't going to be worshiping that. Too risky. Don't know where it's going to go. The whole constructs of that. I would check out my Christ battery. The cross itself. Forget about it. But this crucifixion is going to be tied to the word reincarnation. So if you put your faith in that character, will you just get recycled back into the game? I mean, the big takeaway is the re, reincarnation, recycle, redo, repeat, re-engage, reinvent. The re It's going to be tied to light. But there's the 42 twice. There's the 42 again in perhaps a concept that... We're all under the spell of the lucid dreaming. Are we just the lucid dream of the cosmos? Is the cosmos just having a lucid dream? I mean, lucid is 17, same as the word life, same as the word 30, which is tied to role play. But nonetheless, it's tied to this 42 and we get into some Douglas Adams and Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and the 42 is life, universe, everything. How about that? So reincarnation tied to life, universe, everything. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and what that supercomputer sp spit out. And I feel it's tied directly into the whole model of Jupiter. And Jupiter has this logo right there below the planet. There, If you look at the logo, there's the 24 in there. There's the 241. There's the 42 in there as well. So it carries all these symbols and numbers just in that logo right there. There's the two, there's the four, and there's the one. And 241, just so we could be crystal clear, going to numberempire.com, 241 is the 53rd prime number. It's embedded into that Jupiter uh, logo. And 53, just so we can also be crystal clear, it's tied to the iodine, the I, the I am. And that's why the 95 molybdenum is tied to americium. It's the I am. That's, a, that's how you read this stuff, folks. It's not just going to be hand delivered to you. You got to look and see. But the 42 is going to be tied to the 53. And it's going to oversee the prison planet. The iodine. It's, just, it's all right there, folks, for you to see. So let's bring these two leads together, shall we? It's lead and the other lead. And this one's heavily tied to Saturn. But it's molybdenum and lead. And the 42 and the 82. And they both have the number 2 on the end. It's really interesting. But notice that they're both 33s. I already, already showed this. Molybdos through the original Greek is 33. And then the reason why it's PB is because it's plumbum. And the Latinized version of it, it's 33. And if you do lead, it's 13, and 33 plus 13 is going to give you 46, which is going to be tied to the game of life anyway. But nonetheless, when you add up 42 and 82 using the trusty calculator, bam, here it is. It's 124. Adding up the protons of both of these leads, it's 124, and here it is. The big dead giveaway tied to this element, tellurium, coming from the Latin word tellus. And there's a reason why the little earth is there. And again, I want to just say, uh, this is not saying the earth is round. People get so sensitive. It's just a model. It's, it means earth, prison planet, right there with this lead. And when you go and break down even further through the string of pi, 
Lead being 82 is found at the 52nd decimal digit. How many protons are here? 52. Prison planet. Prison planet is 52. And then when you do the molybdenum and you go 42 digits into the string of pi, it's found at the 92nd decimal digit, 92 and 93. And that leads to this graphic right here. I've released this already, but if you want to know what this graphic means, why it's, you know, so powerful and what it really means, what are they trying to tell you? It means magnetic earth, magnetic and electric earth, of course. The Christ pointing to the heart chakra right here. Of course, heart is an anagram of the word earth. They use the same letters. And this is the element that represents earth. And then thank you, Joe Roland, a fellow uh, decoder, pointed out that <laughs> this is the sign language symbol for the letter U right here, the two fingers together. And of course, Jesus saying the father is magnetism, which is Uranus, which is father sky. Of course, this is pointing up with the symbol. And there's that letter U, the lucky horseshoe. And when you take 92 and you add 52, you're going to get 144, which is going to give you the element neodymium again, which is feed the wolf, the number 60, which I've been showing. And then if you add up 127 and the 239 uh, together, you're going to get the number 365, which is going to give you the total numbers on the days of the Gregorian calendar. And then, uh, you know, when you add up the, uh, the, the molybdenum and lead together, you're going to get 303. And going back right here, if you take 92 protons and you add the weight of it, 238, you will get 303. So, you know, is this the father? Well, I'm going to show you that this just might be the possibility from lead to gold, but there it is, the 303 again, 303, obviously notorious for the age of Christ when he was crucified. And again, he was led. We're led. We're, we are the Christ, folks. The great awakening is you realizing that and realizing your love. And there's and fear is just should be subordinate, but it's not in people's lives. Fear is on the forefront of their life. Well, that needs to be flipped and it is being flipped. That's the great awakening. The second coming of Christ is not some dude coming down from the sky. It's you awakening to the fact that you are a leader of love versus fear. But nonetheless, here is the universe being the 33 again in the same cipher. And remember, 92 plus 238 is 303. What does uranium have as its symbol or the first letter? 21st letter in the alphabet. 21 is the world card in the tarot. Can't get any more clearer than that. That's why horseshoes are considered lucky. If you have one of these over your door, now you know what it means. You want to have it upright, not pointing down. And then uranium doing the numerology is that 25 tied to the word father. And 25 is going to be tied to the element manganese. Go check out the icon that the Royal Society of Chemistry uses for that. There's a big magnet. <laughs> There's a big magnet. This is going to be tied to the zodiac sign Aries, the first sign. So I think this is, I have a few slides left. So I wanted to show this one right here because this one may be really important in our reality right now. We're in the year 2022, the boiling point and the melting points. These are very big clues for these elements, I feel. But this element led right here, which is Saturn's direct element, which I showed in my, I think my random thoughts was a big, big highlight of this. Random thoughts number 11. But the boiling point in Kelvin, measuring the sun's temperature, there's the date on the calendar right now that's representing 2022. If you're watching this and it's still 2022, uh, you know, you, we talk about the harvest. Saturn's Saturn and Jupiter are tied to the harvest. These constructs anyway. I don't know if they're real or if these people are going to be pulled out. Of, we don't know, folks. But how how important is it to see these numbers and then the melting point is 600. Go check out my Groundhog Day decoded. When he woke up every morning, it was 6 a.m. 600. And I feel the melting point represents when we come into this world, the boiling point perhaps representing when you leave this world or perhaps if you subtract the two, 
you get the or you get the in between point, and that may be the mouth that you get spewed out of when you become lukewarm. But nonetheless, that 2022 perhaps may be tied to the harvest and tied to this element lead right here. And then last but not least, I think this is my last slide right here. The element molybdenum, the other lead, the discovery date is the year 1781 discovered by Peter Jacob Helm. This guy was the actual person to extract it. There was another uh, discoverer by the name of Carl Sheen, I think it is. But nonetheless, it would, the credit was given to Peter when he, uh, when he subtracted it from the other elements. And 1781, <laughs> just to kind of end this with a bang, this presentation is 1781 appears at the 4,031st decimal digit of the golden ratio, lead to gold. There's pi right there. The reason why I am showing the upside down is because it was discovered by Peter. Peter's symbol for the church is the upside down cross representing the upside down world. We live in wonderland. It doesn't mean that everything's inverted, folks. If you know how light works, you just got to know what these things mean. His middle name is Jacob, the house of Jacob. <laughs> this stuff is just, to me, is freaking hilarious. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for sticking with me. If you made it all the way to the end, congratulations. You wanted the information bad enough. And these are my opinions and truths. And I'd love to hear what you saw during this presentation. So what do you got? What did you see? I hope you had some really big aha moments. What does lead to gold mean? The transference of energy. So I am very careful these days. To me, you came into this world naked. You want to leave naked. Naked to me means not having any attachment to certain beliefs and constructs in this reality, including the things that we decode, <laughs> which can be very challenging. But nonetheless, Ladies and gentlemen, all you great decoders around the world, I appreciate each and every one of you, all your donations and Patreons. Much love to all of you. Those of you that are interested in a reading, send me an email, decodeyourreality at gmail.com, and I'll get back to you. I have uh, just opened up my uh, July calendar, so I have some dates available now. But anyway, what did you see during this presentation? Drop your comments in the description box down below or in the... Uh, the uh, the comment section in the the in this video's uh comment section kind of getting tired i think here but anyway that's all i got for today hey my name is logan for decode your reality until next time ladies and gentlemen we will see you later